Hey guys, this is another video brought to you by BU Fitness. Today we're going to talk about rotator cuff quality and we're going to also talk about rotator cuff health. So I'm going to show you a couple of movements today. I'm going to show you how to warm up your shoulders properly before you start engaging in exercise. I'm also going to help you with uh, some mobility movements and, and small strengthening movements that you can apply to your everyday routine. You could do it for 5 to 10 minutes when you get up in the morning or before you go to bed. I'm also going to talk about some exercises you can do on your own at home. You don't need any equipment, so let's go ahead and get into it. So our first movement that we're doing today is called Cat Camel. You want to make sure we get on all fours. Just like so. A little bit so you can kind of see what I'm doing. I want to make sure my wrists are stacked over my shoulders. I also want to make sure my knees are stacked over my hips. And I want to be about shoulder and hip width apart. Just like so. so. This is what I look like in the front. I'm nice and stacked. So, I'm going to go ahead and place my hands underneath myself. I'm going to go ahead and rotate inwards, bring my arms in so I can lock my arms into place. I'm also going to take a deep breath in, quick breath out to brace my core. And I'm going to also make sure I maintain my hip stability. So, I'm not going to be moving my hips up and down when I'm doing this. I'm going to take a deep breath in, and at the same time, I'm going to extend through the spine, just like so I'm pushing away, so my arms are still screwed and I'm pushing away from the surface. I'm going to take a deep breath out. I'm going to compress my, uh, my spine to the downward position, pushing my chest down and into my shoulders. And I want to think about it, it's in the middle of my back too, so I might be able to trap. So right here, that we're working as well, the T-spine. Just that movement, just do this, uh, the thoracic spine, top part of your spine. And then keep my hips in place. And deep breath in. I'm extending, keeping my right breath. I'm not holding my breath, I'm breathing out. Relaxing that position a little bit deeper every time. And that's it with that one. I want to keep my core nice and tight. I want to make sure that I'm getting movement up top, but I don't want my hips moving too much because I want to make sure I have a stable um, base to work off of. So I would say do about one to two reps of those. And then let's go ahead and get our shoulders and arms a little bit more warmed up before we get to the exercise because we want to make sure that we're warmed up before we get to any uh, like, like mobility movements or anything. We want to make sure we have an act warm and good blood flow to the muscles before we start engaging to reduce any kind of injuries or any, any tissue damage or anything. So I'm gonna go ahead and go through a circuit for you to go over some upper body arm movements. So I'm active. So I'm gonna go ahead and start swinging my arms. I'm extending all the way through. Reach, reach, reach. I'm getting max effort so I can get all points of motion and then I'm gonna bring it all the way back. You can't do that, that's okay. Just work your way up if this is as far as you go. Just work your way up if it kind of bothers you. If you, your shoulder bothers you a little bit, just bring it back down. We just wanna get some movements. So we're gonna go all the way up, reach. Bring it all the way back, kind of flip the wrist, come up. I would do about 10 of these. I'm kind of, I want to rotate with it so I can get that thoracic spine more up and then watch my fingertips the whole time. Bring it back, coming through, all the way through, come up, all the way back. So I'm going to do 10 of those and then I'm going to go forward in the same arm. Kind of swiping, bringing it all the way back, coming up, swiping my wrist forward. Getting that max effort, bringing it up, getting a slight thoracic spine rotation in this so I can also uh, warm up that thoracic spine. Flicking, coming all the way through, washing my finger, reaching, reaching through it. So I'm pulling that scap off the shoulder, just like so. So I'm reaching, kind of flicking the wrists, coming up, rotating through, reaching all the way through those fingertips and coming up. So when I'm done with 10 on that side, I would do the other side. So we come up, reach, reach, reach. My eyes are following, I'm getting that extension, I'm rotating with that movement, getting that max effort, up, 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 rotating, my hands are rotating, my fingers are rotating, I'm getting all of that reach, coming up, rotating through, coming up, all the way through, 
once I got done with my 10, I would go to the other side, reaching. If you'd like to do it a little bit faster, once you get more comfortable, you may. I actually usually kind of go into it a little bit faster, just like so to get some more blood flow. But if your shoulders are really tight and bothering you, don't go that aggressive. Work your way into it. We always want to work our way into any kind of movement that we're just starting off with. So once I get both single arm movements uh, forward and back, I'm going to go both down and back. So I'm going to not go over my shoulders. I'm just going to go right at the chest. So I'm flicking my wrist uh, back. I'm bringing it up. And I'm thinking about pinching my shoulder blades back and keep my rotation down. So I can get that max range of motion in my shoulders. And like I said, just go nice and slow. If you're, you're pretty new at this, just work in it. So I usually do about 10 in both planes, forward and back. And then I'm going to go from side to side. So I'm going to go ahead and give myself a big hug. Just like so. I'm flicking my wrists out. I'm opening it up, giving myself a bear hug. Coming in if you want, you can slap yourself. It usually happens if you do this. If you want us to go a little bit slower, just work on nice and easy movements. We're extending the fingers at the back. I'm squeezing, squeezing my shoulder blades together, bringing it all the way back in, getting blood flow to those muscles in those areas, just like so. And then I'm going to go side to side. So I'm going to go ahead and incorporate my hips down. I'm rotating in, squeezing my glutes with it, flicking the wrists, getting that side to side motion. Good. Go from 10, open the wrist, and that next effort, nice and slow. We're rotating. I'm rotating my knee in towards that other side. Just like so. Do 10 on each side. And then you want to, if you want, you can work on um, another external rotation movement. This one's a little bit harder. You want to try to get max effort with this one eventually, but if you, your range of motion isn't there, just work on it. And just nice and easy. With this one. So we're coming up, crossing over, I'm touching the, the lower, trying to get up to the middle of my back to gain that range of motion. So if you're just like here, that's fine. Coming through, we're touching, we're touching, we're touching. Eventually you want to kind of move into it. Use those hips, use the hips to kind of help you get into that position as well. We don't want to shrug our shoulders up, we want to keep our necks nice and long. Just like so, and you don't want to force that position either. So you don't want to be, have your, um, hyperextension with your T-spine. You want to keep that right cage down. So here, so we're just working our way up. You can rotate with it. You can shift your hips with it as well. Get some hip movement in there. More up the lats. More up your external obliques as well. Just like so. And then once I'm done with that, I go into shoulder circles. I do 10 forward. I do 10 back. And then I do uh, uh, elbow circles. One, two, three, four. Six, if you want, you can flip your wrist with it. It'll help warm up your wrist a little bit more. Five, six. And then the other one. One, two, three, four, five. Good. So I'm keeping my elbows close to my sides and just working on flicking them out. Just like to the sides. And then I go right to my wrist. So I rotate my wrist for about 10. And then out for 10. And then I do a little nice finger warm up that a lot of penis do before they uh, start. Uh, it's a nice little warm up that they do for uh, getting ready to. So what you do is you shake your wrists out, you shake your hands, and then you clutch them as hard as you can to get blood flow to the area. Hold, 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 and then you pull them out, push them out as hard as you can. Uh, splay them, I guess it's the best word to use. And then you do it again. I do this about three or four times. So I shake my hands out, get some blood to those areas, and then I stop and squeeze. Get the active blood flow, and then I... Push my fingers out, just like so. So this is my active upper body warm up. So now I feel pretty warmed up now. Now I'm gonna go ahead and get to our actual um, mobility movements, exercise, active warm up, all that good stuff. So let's go ahead and get into it. <laughs> all right, so the first exercise or mobility movement that I'm gonna be doing with you today, it is called our supine Y arm and reach. So let's go ahead and get on the ground. Just like so, I'm going to go ahead and have my uh, knees bent, just like so. I'm going to be about hip width apart. So you can get out a little bit more so you can kind of see me. You might not be able to see my feet, but I want you to be able to see my upper body a little bit more here. So my feet are about hip width apart, nice and flat on the ground. I'm going to go ahead and lie down on my back, and I'm just going to lie there and relax 
next for about 15 to 30 seconds to let my body settle. Let gravity kind of do the work. Let my hips settle into the ground. Let my shoulders settle down and back. Relax into the floor. And I'm also going to really focus on diaphragm breathing. Diaphragm breathing helps reset a lot of any tension that we're holding in the body, and it also helps reset a lot of the muscles, especially in the chest and in the rotator cuff in the back. Kind of helps. It changes the way we breathe and it changes the way we hold the tension in our body. So we want to make sure we can reduce tension and reduce strain in our body to help any uh, way to recover. If we have anything that's super sore, anything that's bothering it, it will reduce any lactic acid buildup in our body and it will make our body less acidic. So let's go ahead and lay down. I'm going to just lay down for about five minutes or five seconds. Five seconds just to relax. I'm going to take my hand, place it on my diaphragm that's right underneath. You're still here, right below. It's like right on the, the lower ribs, right there. I'm gonna take my hand and take a deep breath into the nose. Big breath out through the mouth. Again, deep breath into the nose. You want to do about five seconds, and then five eight seconds out, you want the breath out longer at the exhale longer. That way, just to think about sitting in that breath, and I want you to be in the moment. It's so important, especially when you're doing deep breathing, is to be in the moment and just clear your mind. We'll do one more. Great. So now I feel like I'm pretty set. I'm going to make sure I have my uh, lower back is in a neutral position. It's not completely compressed into the ground, but I have a slight lower back arch. I want to make sure my shoulders are down the back. So my my um, my shoulders should be near my ears. I should be down, bring it back. I don't want to be overextending, so my chest should be completely hyperextending up. I just want to be down and center, just like so. I'm going to go ahead and bring my arms up into a wide position to be with them. Bring my shoulders back and down. Hold. Deep breath out. I'm going back, I think I'm resetting my shoulders, and I have my thumbs up. You know, you got that. While I'm bringing it back, I'm going to keep my ribcage down, I'm going to be breathing out. You might feel some cracking in this, I'm not used to doing this. And then I'm just going to hold, I'm just going to hold this position. I'm going to keep my thumbs on the ground, just like so. So I'm in a wide position, my arms are a little bit wider, my, my um, shoulders are down the back, my rib cage is in the uh, hyper sitting, I'm bringing it all the way down, I'm keeping that neutral spine, I'm keeping my core on as well, I'm just going to breathe up the nose, out the mouth, bring my shoulders down the back, in the hole, for about 15-30 seconds, for however long that you feel like you need to do this for, and then I'm going to bring back out the bit in. Come home, bring it out. So those shoulders are a little bit deeper, a little bit further back. Then we go into it again. Good. Keep it out. Neck is nice and extended. Nice and tall through that position. Keeping that neutral spine, we're not compressing. The lower lumbar spine, we have space and we Nice and wide. And back up. So now I'm going to go into the next movement. So now I'm going to bring my arms about chest level, just like so, shoulder to chest level. They're going to be about 90 degrees up, just like so. I'm going to make sure I'm going to come down. I bring my shoulders down and back and back. I'm going to have that neutral spine as well. I'm going to make sure my core is on. I'm going to keep my hips seated into the ground. I'm going to take a deep breath in. Deep breath out, let my elbows settle. Rest for a second, and then I get right into it. I want to make sure that my wrists stay in a neutral position. They're keeping in line with the elbows when I rotate them back. Keeping my neck nice and long, and I keep my shoulders down from back. So I'm going to do that again. I'm rotating through. 
bringing my wrist and my fists to the ground and I'm keeping my elbows to the ground. I don't want my shoulders to kick up like so. I just want to be nice and long. And if this is hard for you, if this is as far as you can go, that's fine. We're just going to rest. We're just going to move through that movement. Reducing that tension. Keeping the arms down and back. And then we're just going to hold this position for about 15 to 30 seconds. So you just sit and breathe. Let, let, let gravity do the work. You don't want to force anything with the rotator cuff. You want to take it nice and easy with the shoulders. Then we're going to bring back up and we're going to go the other way. So this is our internal and external rotation. Super high. So bring it up. Deep breath in, holding. Take a deep breath out one more time. Good. And now I'm going to come down, bringing my shoulders down. I'm not going to let my shoulders pop off the ground. I'm not going to let my lower back or upper back arch. Well, the lower back's going to have that neutral part of arch, but my hips are going to excessively come up. I'm going to keep them down in a neutral position. And my, my back's not going to come up either. I'm just going to keep it down, shoulders back. And I'm just going to bring this down as far as I can. You want to be about 20 to 30 degrees. You don't want to come all the way down with this. If you can come down a little bit lower, that's fine. But you want to make sure your shoulders, you're not getting too much extension in that thoracic spine. You want to be nice and easy on your shoulders. So we go about 15 to 30 seconds. Then come back to the neutral position and start again. So that was our supine internal external teaching for a nice little mobility. So once you get done with that, after you're done warmed up, we do some breathing. Um, I suggest if you have um, any kind of a ball at your house, this is a great way to loosen up the pectoral minor. The pectoral minor is a big issue with a uh, forward shoulder position and can cause a lot of issues with posture. And it can um, inhibit a lot of other movements in your body as well. If your pectoral minor is really tight, your shoulders are going to come forward. You're not going to be able to breathe properly, so then you're, you're going to be more acidic. You're going to have more lactic acid in your system. And then you're not going to be able to stabilize properly either. So then it's going to cause a lot of lower hip problems. So we want to make sure that we really focus on loosening up that pectoral minor, which is right here. So what I want to do is I want to take a lacrosse ball. Place it right in my pectoral minor. minor. You can do this on the wall or on the ground. I'm going to go ahead and line the ground with the lacrosse, lacrosse ball or the med ball, just like so. Place it in my pectoral minor, just like so. I'm going to bring my opposite leg up so I can apply more pressure on that position. I'm going to tuck it to my side and make sure that my shoulder doesn't come near my ear. I'm just going to have my head in a neutral position looking down on the ground. And then I'm just going to go ahead and, and go through those movements. So I go out. Laterally, right to the side. Bring it back in. Make sure we're always breathing. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Relax a little bit deeper every time. Hold. You move it around a little bit. Remember, we're not a static. We're not static, so we don't want to have as much movement as possible because our body is able to adapt to all ranges of motion. So you want to move, kind of get some oscillation on there, little circles, bring up, get that tissue to, to loosen up and get some more blood flow to that area. Do another deep breath in. Then you come up into that wide position. Relax. Oscillate, scrub back and forth. If you need to, you can move the ball around as well. And then you come all the way over to the top. You can also push your hand to the ground to create more torque into that position and to create some more blood flow. So you can actively push to activate those muscles. And then come go right back to it. So I kind of go up, go trace right back through what I just did. Come in here. And up. And we want to make sure we hit both sides. So then you would come to the other side. Make sure you're set up, you're just laying on the ground, you kind of straddle a little bit. Hips are pretty even on the ground. We don't want to be all torqued up or all over the place. So just like so in that pectoral minor. If you feel any other tightness in that area, definitely hit it. Anything underneath that or the, the clavicle here, I would say from the mid clavicle out to the shoulder. So well, and if, even if you have some shoulder uh, shoulder. Uh, pain there too, that would definitely help getting in there just as well. But you don't want to over go right on the painful spot because it's usually not in that spot. It's usually uh, correlated with a, like a, an insertion point of a joint or ligament or that around that tissue insertion. Point. So come down, start again, come up to the side, we're tracing, get a little bit of oscillation in there, bring it back in, and then come 
Come up to the side here. Reach, reach, reach. Oscillate. Bring it back in. And you can sit on this a little bit longer. And just for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to grip. Come up to that line position. We're oscillating. And then bring that back in. And then you come all the way up at the top. And then we trace it back to the bottom. So that is our mobility for our, our pec minor there. And another way, if you, you feel like your neck's really tight, because a lot of the times, if our pec minor is tight, our neck muscles are super weak. So that causes a lot more forward uh, head position, and then that can cause a lot of more uh, postural issues. So we want to make sure we loosen all these muscles up in here. So I'm going to show you a little technique. You can take your ball, and we kind of, you can also just do this with your hand if you don't have a ball. You take it, and then we kind of bend our head towards the position. So find a spot that's kind of tight. And I kind of roll it in so the skin kind of wraps around it. You get a little bit of a, like a, a torque in there. I lean my head into it and then I'm going to go ahead and twist while I push my head away. So I'm take a deep breath in, deep breath out. While I'm bending my head in the opposite direction, I'm twisting. So I'm bringing my head off and off, to, out and off to the side. Again, kind of settle it in there. Deep breath in. Deep breath out. Just like so. And you can you can go ahead and do that right above the clavicle and work your way up as a ball. So this will help any tension from that side to side. It already feels way looser. This this uh, these muscles are quite ignored. So just doing a little bit of tissue work with that will definitely help uh, reset your shoulders and reduce a lot of tension that you're getting. And your, your shoulders and your traps, like a lot of this holds, if you do anything, your traps will, will get stuck. And it's because of the, the weak neck muscles of the levator and of um, the satorius muscle right here, this big guy right here. So we want to make sure we can kind of work that out and loosen this up a little bit. So after you're done with that, then we can go ahead and once we get our done with the rest of our mobility, now we can get into our exercise. So let's go ahead and get into our exercises. That we're doing is called the prone eyes, Y's, T's, W's, and O's. So we're going to go ahead and get on the floor. Just like so. I'm going to make sure I come all the way down. And then I'm just going to go ahead and just like last time you want to settle. So I'm going to go ahead and just lay down, let my body, let gravity do the work, and just let my body rest before I get into any extensive movements because I want to make sure that my body settles. So, so I'm gonna, I would be here about for 10 15 seconds, let my hips kind of relax. I'm not straining anything, you can kind of move your hips around a little bit, move your body around to get it, get it woken up and a little bit more ready. But you should feel pretty good after all of our warm up. So, so we're gonna come up, and I want you to raise shoulders are down the back. We're gonna keep our tucker chin, keep it in a neutral position. I'm not having my head out too long, high, causing that hypertension of the T spine. I'm just gonna be in that neutral position, just like so. So I'm going to go ahead and come up and we're going to do eyes. So I'm going to bring my arms out. I'm going to follow my thumbs all the way up and I'm just going to extend through the shoulders. Just like so. So I'm extending through the shoulders, keeping that neutral spine. The shoulders are down the back. And bring it back down. And breathing. Always breathing. Keep your core nice and tight. Take a deep breath out. Deep breath out for the diagram. Bring those shoulders up, we're squeezing the shoulders, so the shoulders are down and away from the neck. And we're keeping that head in a neutral position, so we're tucking that chin. Bring it back down. Hold for about five to ten seconds. Go into the lines, bring it up. Hold, 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 we're holding for about five to ten seconds. Hold, hold, hold. Bring it back down. Come up into the eyes. Up, 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 we're holding, 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 extending through the shoulders, keeping that neck long, tucking it. We're not extending the head up too far. And then we're going to the W's, and then down, so trace on the floor. W's back, down the back. Hold, hold, hold it. You can keep those shoulders down, back, back, and squeezing the shoulder blades together. Just like so, I'm not overextending off the floor, not coming up too far. I just want to keep it in a neutral position. I really think about through the T spine shoulders, and then I'm going to go ahead and do my hands. Rotate them back. You cannot do this, that's okay. Just work your way up to it, and then we hold. Shoulders down the back, and you're squeezing. Hold, hold, hold. Five seconds, and then we bring it back down. 
So that is considered one set. So a few points you want to make sure that we're paying attention to. Keep your, keep your glutes squeezed. Keep your core on. We're not overextending through that T-spine. We're keeping that rib cage down. And we want to just really focus on keeping those shoulders down and back and squeezing those shoulder blades together. We're stabilizing. We're not having those. The shoulders come up towards the ears. We're keeping the neck long, shoulders down and away. And we're breathing. We always want to make sure we're breathing. Uh, this is a great uh, exercise to do if you don't have a lot of time the other day. Uh, this is, is just wakes up the shoulders. And mine already feel worn up from just doing those, those holds for a little bit. So that was our first movement. So let's go ahead and get to our next one. It's going to be on the wall. So let's go ahead and take it on the wall over here. Just move you. All right, make sure you can see me. There. Just like so. Okay. So this one is a wall trace or a robot. So I'm going to make sure my feet are about, I don't know, like a foot or two out from the wall. Hips nice and even. I'm going to kind of sit down into it. My back's going to be against the wall. My shoulders and head are going to be against the wall. But my lower back, I'm going to still have that neutral spine. It should be about... You can put your hand behind it, it shouldn't be completely compressed, but you shouldn't be able to fit two hands in there. So if you can fit at least one hand in there, that's good. So we're going to compress it a little bit, but only to hand width. Just like so. So my shoulders are down and away from my ears. My head's pinned against the wall. I'm going to go ahead and bring my arms up into the 90 degree angle that we did earlier on the ground. A little bit. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and actively keep my wrists, I'm going to make fists, I'm going to actively keep my wrists lined up with my elbows, and then I'm going to go ahead and rotate. And then once I get to an end point, I'm going to just drive this hand into the door and this one down towards my hips. I'm going to keep my wrists lined up, and I'm going to breathe. I'm going to drive for about 5 to 10 seconds, and then rotate. There, drive, 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 rotate, rotate, rotate. Make sure you're not bending the wrist. You want to keep the wrist lined up. It's kind of hard. You drive, drive, drive. Keep that neutral spine. Keep your core on. Then we rotate again. Breathing. Keep that core on. Make sure you can dive from breathing. Drive, drive, drive. Then we rotate. Just like so. So what I don't want you to see is I don't want to see your shoulders coming off the door like this. I don't want to see your shoulders at your neck. I don't want to see this was your back. Hyperextension, just like we were talking about, we want to keep that rib cage down, we want to keep that neutral spine, just like so we want to keep that core on as well. So next, let's go ahead and get into the standing rotator cuff movement. So this one's pretty easy. You can do this if you have weights at home. So all you do, you take your uh, take your elbows, put them at the sides, and then do a side view, and then I'll do a front view. So we're, it's going to be internal external rotation. It's a really easy exercise to do if you don't have a lot of equipment. So I'm going to go ahead and just keep my uh, thumbs up. And I'm going to keep my elbow pinned to the side. I'm going to keep my rib cage down, core nice and tight. Take your thumb, quick run up, and then I'm just going to rotate as far as I can with the hand. Just like so. And you can do it on both sides, and then you bring it in. So we rotate in, or rotate out. One, you hold, shoulders down back, squeeze shoulder blades together. Good. Two, we don't want to be all the way back, just think down and back. So you see my shoulders, down and back, we're kind of squeezing. All the way through, rotating. Elbows are as close to my sides as possible. Bringing it in. If you want to just do one arm, and you can also, by the way, do this with a towel. Let's see if I have a towel in here. I do have a little cloth in here, so you can take actually a balled up sack, uh, a towel, place it right on your elbow or underneath, right above your elbow, and this will kind of help you keep that position of your arms. So shoulders are down and back. We don't want to overextend. We just want to be nice and neutral. Make sure that head is not uh, beaming forward. We want to keep that a neutral head position. Kind of tuck the head in a little bit to kind of help reset that posture and help the shoulders. And then we rotate and push into the cloth and then you rotate back. One. Good. Two. So you're doing internal and external rotation. So you can come all the way in and squeeze for the internal and squeeze for the external. I'm actively squeezing this whole time. Just like so. So you can do that on each side. 
I'm going to do sets of 10, just like so. And then let's go ahead and just do some uh, pool exercises for your chest. So this one will kind of help activate and your chest. So all you do is you just take your hands, shoulders are down the back or top of the chin, and you're uh, isolated. It's like an isolation movement and you squeeze. So I'm driving my hands as hard as I can, or not as hard as you can, but enough resistance to where I'm going to feel it. So I'm drive, 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 and see so I'm going to shake in. I hold this about five to ten seconds, and I relax. Another deep breath in. Hold, squeeze my core, drive, 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 shoulders are down and back, I'm still breathing. And relax. And then one more time. Drive, 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 hands in, drive. Squeeze in, pushing those pecs together. I'm thinking about actively activating my pecs. Shoulders are down, squeezing, and good. And then we're going to go ahead and work the back of the shoulders. So we're going to cover hands, just like so. And over hand, you can do this on each side. Shoulders are down and back, and I'm just going to pull them apart. So this will really work your shoulders. So we're just pulling. Five to ten seconds. Make sure you're breathing. Keep that core nice and tight, and relax. Again, let's do two on each side. Hold, hold, hold. Grip, grip, grip. We're pulling them apart, pulling it, pulling it apart. Make sure you're not bringing the shoulders up, or down and back. Let's see if you can from the side and squeeze my glutes. Keep in a neutral position, not having my ribcage come up. And then we do the other side. So I'm cupping, keep it kind of in the center, and I'm grabbing and pulling. Grab, grab, and pull. Fight myself. Hold, 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 and relax. Yeah. Here's another second. Hold, 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 and relax. Whew. Then we have one more. So this last one is really cool. Um, you can do this at all these you can do at any point. I'm going to get a little down and close to you. So it's called a, a it's like a head resistance exercise that you can do in your car. Well, I mean, you, maybe at the lights, but you probably shouldn't do this when you're driving. But I mean, you can do it at the office or whenever you feel like you need a, a break to get some physical fitness in, which is a mental break too. It's kind of fun. So you take this and make sure we keep a neutral head position, just like so. Tuck in my chin. I don't want to be too far in. just want to be neutral, tuck in a little bit. If you have forward head position, I'm going to take my hand, place it on my forehead, I'm just going to put about 5 to 10 pounds of pressure, or about 5 pounds of pressure, I'm going to fight myself. So my neck is fighting the resistance I'm pushing into my head. Here, I'll hold for about 5 to 10 seconds and release. Make sure you're breathing. Again, push in. 5 to 10 seconds. This strengthens all those little muscles in your neck that we do not get enough exercise for. And then you relax. And now we do the back. So you take your head, tuck that chin, make sure you're breathing. Keep the shoulders away. We're press, press, pressing. Fight, fight, fighting it. Five, ten seconds, and relax. Good. With it. Keep it out. Five to ten seconds. Fight, fight, fight it, and then relax. And then I'm going to do side to side. So I'm going to take my hand. Make sure I'm lined up. I got my head tucked in slightly, and then I just fight. Fight, 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 and then relax. One more time. Push in. And relax. And I would do one more time on the other side. So you're doing all four sides. Push, push, push them. And if you feel like this one kind of like gasses you out a little bit, there's great ways to stretch the neck out, just like that, that uh, mobility I showed you where we took the mobility ball and we twisted and then pulled. But you can also do that with just your hands. So I'm going to come in and then grip the, grip the skin just like so on the other side. Come in and then I'm going to pull. I'm going to physically pull the skin away from myself and then turn my head. You can also do that right here as well. So you can take it, set it here, and you can use your arm. If you want to get on that pectoral liner a little bit more, you take it, start it up underneath the clavicle here, just like so. I'm going to take my arm crossed over, and then I'm going to drag and open my arm up and watch my finger, just like so, and then drag. You see how I'm going to just pull that skin, getting that uh, better tissue quality there, Get some blood flow, loosen up any uh, adhesed tissue there. So we would do that on each side. You can do all these one to two times a day, uh, one to ten, or well, <laughs> one to two sets, ten reps. Uh, if you guys need any other ideas, please let me know. Definitely subscribe to my page so you can see more great videos. If you guys have any questions, comments, concerns, definitely let me know. I hope this was super helpful for you today. And uh, I hope you guys have a wonderful day. I'll talk to you later.